this is the sequence of things that you're going to be doing. Of course, we start off everybody with a high FiO2. Let's start with an FiO2 of 1. Okay, when I say fraction of inspired oxygen, I prefer saying 1. Okay, when I say percentage of oxygen that I'm delivering, then it is 100%. Okay, let me get that clear. So we start with FiO2 1. I'm going to tell you what other settings you need to do on the ventilator. I'm going to tell you how to set the PEEP. And I'm going to tell you what you will be doing with each one of these. Okay, shall we move on? <clears throat> yeah, now you've intubated. Uh, now this is, yeah, I'm back. Right, uh, Girish, I have a question there. I have intubated this patient and uh, I want my audience to select between their choice of either a volume controlled mode or a pressure controlled mode. I think there was already a class on uh, the different modes of ventilation. So the answer will be either a volume or a pressure. Please give your answers. Huh? So, so Dr. Raymond, so yes. far uh, 50 responses we have. <clears throat> okay, what do they say? 56% uh, are selected in option A. That is volume control. And, and uh, yes. Okay, so 40% are selected, selected option B. Okay. And the remaining want newer modes, I would presume. <laughs> okay. Uh, Girish, your son was also giving out some answer from behind. <laughs> Just kidding. That's on the lighter side. Don't get panicked. That's okay. That's me. Yeah, fine. So it looks like majority of you all want to do volume control. See, let me get this straight. You can do whatever you want. As long as you know what you're doing. Okay. You can do a volume control. You can do a pressure control. Or you can start with one. And if something is not working out, you can always switch back to the other. You can try. Okay. So there is no correct answer for this. You can do whichever you want. There are just a few points that I've put over here. You know, the for some reason, volume control happens to be the one that was studied in all the ARDS network trials, okay? So it's sort of, uh, without saying, it becomes a universal sort of a practice. We say that volume is strictly controlled, but I want you to understand, I think the people who have attended the previous classes sessions will appreciate that even though the volume is strictly controlled, let's say I set in a tidal volume of 360, don't be assured that all 360 will be delivered, okay? Because you will also be setting some alarms over there. <coughs> if you have set a pressure alarm, that is a peak pressure cutoff, okay? It's a cutoff alarm. If you have set a peak pressure cutoff at 40, then even if for a tidal volume of 100, your ventilator is hitting a peak pressure of 40, the ventilator will stop delivering anything more, okay? So that is the right setting. You, your settings are incomplete if you have not set your alarms properly, okay? So don't be assured that whatever you are set will be delivered even if it is volume control, okay? And again, we know that pressure is variable, but there also you have a check in the alarm, okay? So be assured it's not too bad. And yes, the nice thing we keep, we are going to be using this word P plateau, which is a representation of alveolar pressure for your level, at least to start with right now. Towards the end, I will say it's not okay. Don't point that. Okay. Right. Okay. So for these reasons, maybe some people will prefer volume control and then pressure control. Of course, I put something called decelerating flow pattern, but see nowadays the new generation machines have decelerating flow, even uh, volume control. So that should technically go out of there. And maybe one reason which is pretty much important that you all should understand is a higher mean airway pressure, which is the driving force for oxygenation as well. Okay, let me show you with this graph. I hope you, some of you at least are familiar with this. These are what we call as scalars. Okay, anything plotted against time is called a scalar. When pressure is plotted against time, it is a pressure scalar. Flow plotted against time is a flow scalar. Volume plotted against time is a volume scalar. Okay. Now, this is volume control ventilation. This is pressure control ventilation. I want you to appreciate. Now, this is the airway pressure. Okay. Airway pressure rises a little bit. And then it takes a long time to slowly reach the peak pressure. And then it descends during the expiration. Okay. So, the mean airway pressure is given by the area under this curve. Whereas in pressure control, appreciate that the peak pressure is reached almost instantaneously and it remains at peak pressure for the rest of the time and then it comes down. Okay, So for this reason, you should appreciate that the mean airway pressure is going to be higher in a pressure controlled ventilation. When I say mean airway pressure, it is throughout both the inspiratory and the expiratory cycle. So this is one valid reason and one charming reason why somebody would like to try a pressure controlled ventilation. There is another reason also. Let me go back. Okay. 
another very common reason why somebody would prefer a pressure control especially in somebody who is not paralyzed okay when you are going to start ventilation i presume most of you are going to paralyze the patient especially at least for moderate to severe ARDS yes so flow starvation or flow asynchrony is something very commonly seen which screws up some of our ventilation okay in volume control ventilation we fix a certain flow irrespective of what the patient wants if you do not set the right kind of flow there is going to be this flow asynchrony whereas in pressure control the patient can decide his own flow okay somebody who has a very high respiratory demand can actually generate or can get a higher flow from the ventilator so for these reason again some people would prefer a pressure control ventilation there are many other things which i can talk this much is enough right now